Ah, uh, home. Home. Why did they tear me away? Here, the weak die, easy as a feather. And when they die, they die forever. I'd like to go back home again. It makes me think of sweet spring flowers. Before, when I used to live at home, it never seemed so dear and fair. I remember now those golden days. But maybe I'll be going there soon again. We all hope the time will come when we'll go home again. Now I know how dear it is, and often I remember it. In the morning on Sunday, they connected. They were running with dogs in the houses, in the apartment houses, taking the people out from their houses and collecting them on the main plaza of the town in Europe. If you have been in Europe, each city had a city hall surrounded by a huge plaza. And on that plaza, they collected all those people. They took you out of the ghetto? They didn't, yeah. They didn't take us out because as a physician, my father was favored. But the other people in the ghetto they had to go out. To the some did hide in their in the basement. They made they made some hiding places behind. Uh, they they had a room, a small room, and they could cover that room with a um, with a um, like a book a bookcase, and they hid behind. At the beginning, the German didn't know about that, so many people survived. But that night, ten thousand people were killed at the ghetto. The way they ki were killed, they had to get undressed, completely naked, and jump into the grave. But you know, Germans were very organized. You had to lie down one by the other. Makes nice row. And they shoot in. Then the next group had to jump in and lie on, on top of the others. Till the, and they were shooting. So many people got killed, but many was only hurt. So how do you know they, they, get, they, they got asphyxiated in those graves? So many people, after the action finished, and they left that um, cemetery, so many people came out naked. But what they I want... Came up from there? Yeah. Maybe those, the they were on top. But what I want to tell you, the Gestapo and the SS, they had tables with sandwiches, with drunk, and they, they were shooting the people and eating. And there was, the chief of our Gestapo was by name Krieger, Hans Krieger. And he was riding a white horse, driving around and checking of everything. Finally, around five o'clock, he said, okay, it's over. The one who is, is, wasn't killed can go home. We didn't know where they were taking us, the, the whole uh, camp. We were searched internally, which was very unpleasant, and they didn't wash their hands between searching, and lined up without anything. We, did, we, we were not allowed to take anything with us. I only had my coat that I had, that coat lift with me was my cover and everything. And we were taken by first uh, marched, and then on a boat, and we wound up in a camp that used to be a, a stone factory. Uh, no, what do you call the stones you build your brick, bricks. And about this event, I had blocked this out of my mind, and I started remembering it about two or three years ago. Um, before. The Germans were in, and before they transport took everybody, uh, somebody sent me word uh, that I am going to be interrogated. Uh, they told me that they are going to interrogate me about Christianity, how much I know about it, and how I say the prayers. Now, I didn't know how to say prayers in Hungarian, because I, but I did know the prayers in Italian, because I lived in Italy among Christians, and uh, we even had a church in that school, and I was in the choir. I learned how to sing the Ave Maria in Latin. So I did very well on this interrogation. 
I convinced the commander who kept screaming at me. He had a he had a whip in his hand. He wasn't beating me, but he put that whip on the floor all the time, and he would always scream at me, "Your mother is Jewish. Your father is Christian." And I kept telling him, "No," <laughs> in Hungarian. When I went to college here in Indiana, uh, to mainly to learn English. I studied for those exams like if my life would depend on it, and I couldn't understand why. And then when, the, when these memories came back to me, I sort of felt a similarity from the prayers I studied and the fear that I had uh, for this. It was like an exam, an interrogation, that tremendous uh, fear if the life depended on it, on what you were saying. The Russians were coming close in January, you know. They didn't want us to free. Uh, so they pushed us in January farther to Germany. So after Auschwitz, I walked three days and three, we walked three days and three nights. And uh, whoever stood behind, they shot him. And then they put us again on cattle trains and we went to Bergen-Belsen. When we walked three days and three nights, from Auschwitz to the kettle, to the tr train, my shoes froze to my skin. You know, it was so cold. That's why a lot of people died because they couldn't walk and they didn't eat. So they shot them. I don't know if they ever showed anything on TV like that. Bergen-Belsen was terrible. It was just so filthy. I mean, that's all we stood and just pulled the lights off of us, you know. And uh, I don't, we were there, let's see, from January till May. Yeah. And um, in May, uh, we, the Nazis were walking around like crazy. They knew something, it's coming, end of the war. So we started yelling and screaming. And I remember one Nazi got mad and he shot in the barrack. And he got a girl right in front of me. Her brain just scattered all over. Her sister just died a few days before on typhus, and it was terrible. You have to escape to something, you know, mm -hmm. to find a for sure safe haven. Do you think that began to happen in our last year, or last year and a half, where the partisan groups that were in the woods mm -hmm. But they could not invite people. They were small groups, hit and run, mm -hmm. and they needed able-bodied people. We were weakened by disease and malnutrition. and mm -hmm. Just to close it, how could they put us into some decent clothes, you know, or clean us up with a good bath or... Mm -hmm. Oh, it was dreadful. Did you see any resistance? during the time you were there by the people that were in this camp? Not overt. I mean, they, everyone did whatever they possibly could to delay, to sidetrack, to sabotage. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing they could do as mm -hmm. far as... Mm -hmm. But there was no practical way that you could in any way um, escape and survive. Before the, the English um, soldiers came, you know, from the West, there, uh, we heard them already shooting on everything. They took us out. They wanted to bring us still not to Auschwitz. They took the whole camp. They were in, in Bern Belsen. They had different camps. Everybody had maybe, I don't know, maybe 50 camps they had. And we were the Dutch people, you know, Dutch camp. And they took our camp. And the dead they left behind. They took us in a train. What did you believe was going to happen to you? Nobody knew, you know. You always have hope, so. I always was thinking, I will make it, I will make it, so 
Yeah, I was all by myself, you know. And uh, I always had hope. On the, we went in a train for two weeks. We've been in a train with sick people, dead people, kids, whole families. Terrible. And the Germans were hiding in the train. They put always another uh, car on the train because the Germans wanted to flee for the English people, for the English soldiers. So I think uh, maybe a couple of days later, uh, Bergen-Belsen got the liberated, but we were still on the go. The German was scared that the Russians were going to be taken over the town. And the first thing, they're going to attack the, the electrical plant. So they moved, they began to move into private houses, the soldiers. So then my family said, uh oh, you cannot stay with us in the house. It's dangerous. And according to what we hear on the radio, the situation is going to be, going to be fast, fast, fast. The Russian won't take long. They are 100 miles from our town. This is going to be fast that the Russian take over the city. We're going to hide you. They had a little, in the garden, there was a little shed where they kept wood for winter, coals for winter, agriculture uh, appliances. So he dig like a little grave in the shed. Was, I couldn't stand up there, right? It was my length. And I could only see it. They put some straw there and some wooden, some wood, and planks, and they put me in there, a blanket, and they covered it, hiding place with wood on top. What time they, of year is this? Is it winter, summer? That was in March. So it's cool. March 44, 44. And we thought it's going to be for maybe one or two weeks, one month, the most. And that was till August 44. You never came out? I never came out. I never stood up. I had only small opening where a little bit of light and air could, could go through. And not every day I could eat because they couldn't get out from the house because of the German being in their house. So. When they had the opportunity to go out, they just dropped me a piece of potato, a slice of bread, a little bit of water. Some of the things I, I sort of got it out of my, I didn't want to remember, I don't know, somehow, some, uh, some things I remember and some things I don't. When we got free, they tried to give us medicine and food and everything, and, but people were still dying because they were so sick. And the only thing I remember I had such a heart when I thought I'd die, you know. And uh, the Nazis started running away, so the English were cutting them, and they couldn't catch them. They were shooting them because they, and when they, we, when they caught them, they were helping. There were so many bodies, you know, so the, the Nazis were throwing the, the, the bodies on trucks. They made, the English made them do that after we got freed, you know. The Russian came from the east, they stopped our train, and we got liberated, you know. And the Russians, the, the Germans got all arrested. So, but we were so sick, we didn't know what was going on even. I had meningitis, I had typhus fever, I got everything, so. We were so weak. You can't imagine, for two weeks we haven't eaten anything. We went to the fields to get something to eat, or we went to the farmhouses. And the, the farmers said to us, uh, are you from the train where the gypsies are in? That's what they told us. They never gave us anything. The Russians came to the Ukraine there. And as they marched forward, we marched behind them to go back to our town, to Bessarabia, that they occupied. Mm -hmm. And that, that after we were liberated, we lived under the Russians for about another year. And then they said, if you consider yourself that you were a Romanian citizen before the war, you can leave. 
that's when we left.